Congressman Ron Paul's audit the Fed bill, H.R. 1207, has officially been gutted thanks to North Carolina Democrat Mel Watt. Just before the bill was to have received a full, overwhelmingly positive committee vote, Congressman Watt, chairman of the Subcommittee on Domestic Monetary Policy and Technology, whose district is home to the headquarters of the Bank of America, removed key provisions from Congressman Paul's bill, including the audit of the Fed's monetary policy-making authority, as well as the requirement for transparency of those suspicious secret agreements with foreign central banks. Joining me now to discuss all of this is John Tate, president of the Campaign for Liberty. John, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Oh, thank you, Judge. Good to be here again. Will, will we ever find out as much about the Fed as we know about the CIA? Well, that's our plan. We're, uh, we're gearing up and uh, have our members uh, contacting the members of the House Financial Services Committee. We're not giving up on this yet. Um, you know, this is sort of stage five of the six things that uh, politicians try to do. Uh, to stop people from uh, affecting change. And uh, they've sort of jumped ahead to stage five, which is try to offer a compromise and sell out. And uh, we're not going to stand for that. We're demanding a, a um, up and down vote on uh, Congressman Paul's H.R. Uh, 1207 as originally drafted. And uh, we're gearing up and getting our members involved and calling, uh, you know, right now there's uh, 29 Republicans on the House Financial Services Committee. All of them are co-sponsors of H.R. 1207 and 13 Democrats are co-sponsors as well. And if we can hold those folks in line, uh, we should be able to restore the bill to its original intent. All right. Let, let me make sure I understand and those watching and listening to us understand what happened. Congressman Paul proposed this bill. He's proposed it for many years. Nobody really paid any attention to it. It requires a full, above-the-board, open audit of everything that the Federal Reserve has done and is doing domestically and foreign policy-wise. Suddenly, people start jumping on his bandwagon. At this point in time, all the Republicans and more than half the Democrats in the Congress are in favor of the bill in its original full-blown edit the Fed form. It gets to this subcommittee in the hands of this congressman who represents the district where the Bank of America is headquarters, headquartered and he guts it. What do we have to do to get it back into its original form? And how can this one guy gut a bill that more than half of his colleagues in both parties are in favor of? I think uh, on, on the second point, Congressman Paul said it best uh, the other night when he said, you know, if the bill were to be voted on in its current form on the House floor, it might pass unanimously because nobody wants to go on record especially heading into another election year as uh, having voted against a complete audit of the Fed. So what they're trying to do is change it and stop it and water it down until it's meaningless prior to it coming up for a vote. What we have to do very simply, Congressman Paul will be offering in full committee an amendment to the bill, uh, which will restore the original language. And we are calling on our members and supporters and the American people, by the way, 75 percent of whom support a full audit of the Fed. We're calling on them to contact members of the House Financial Services Committee and urge them to stick with their original promise to support Ron Paul's bill uh, for a complete and full audit of the Fed. That's have step number one. Have people um, come to realize, John, uh, that this central bank has destroyed 95 percent of the value of the dollar since it came into existence in 1913, and that in the 130 years of our existence prior to that, the dollar actually went up in value, in value by 13 or 15 percent? Do the, does the American public understand that this is really just a cartel to enrich the people who own it? I think uh, probably a year ago, maybe even six months ago, they didn't. I think uh, now more and more of them are understanding that. You know, Ron has been for years talking about this issue along with other people, uh, as you mentioned earlier, sort of to a deaf ear. Um, but now, you know, I, I think uh, the, the poll numbers, I think Rasmussen did a poll uh, a few months ago on this issue. and. Whereas, you know, five years ago, if you did a poll on the Fed, 75% uh, of the American people would have said, what's the Fed? Uh, now, 75% of the American people say, yes, we need to audit the Fed um, and find out where our money's going and what they're doing. So I think the tide is turning. I think that is why um, 
to me, this is good news that they're trying this uh, to water this bill down because it's a sign that we are succeeding. It's a sign that the American people are outraged, and it's a sign that uh, we can win this battle if we keep the pressure on. Last night uh, here in New York City, in Lower Manhattan, the chairman of the New York Federal Reserve called into his offices the heads of many banks which either did not receive TARP funds or received TARP funds and paid them back. And he basically said, cut your executive compensation or the government will do it for you. This is the Federal Reserve threatening private banks. Would we know about such a threat or would we know about what, what caused or what would back up such a threat if the audit came about? Oh, absolutely. And we'd know so much more. Um, you know, how they decide their monetary policy. Uh, the one that, that I think is, is a very big issue is uh, the agreements they're making in secret with foreign banks and foreign governments. I mean, we know very little about what they do. They've operated that way forever. And uh, I think that uh, a full-scale audit of the Fed would, would open up all of those issues and would let the American people see. I mean, you know, just a, a small start where did all of our money go for these TARP funds? I mean, they, you know, uh, when uh, Chairman Bernanke came before the House and they asked him, you know, Chairman Bernanke, where, where, can you please tell us where the money went? And his response was no, uh, I'm not required to and I'm not going to. So uh, I think this, this audit uh, of the Fed is, is sorely needed and, and something we've got to get through. And that's why we're keeping the pressure on. John Tate, thanks very much for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge.